This video is freemium, so head to lotuseaters.com for the full video. Uh, right, so Josh, where are we beginning? Well, we're going to begin with the motivation for setting up the company in the first place. And um, I, I believe um, what you told me, um, not to put words in your mouth, is that it was almost like an insurance policy because you couldn't rely on YouTube to um, keep your channel because, mm. of course, they always use the the threat of a strike to get obedience and you can't always be obedient to what they want when you're arguing against many of the things that they do. It's not just that, though. I mean, that that was like there are several motives behind it. Mm -hmm. That was one motive, it's the, the profound insecurity of ensuring that your entire livelihood is just tied to a YouTube channel or where, whatever, you know, some Silicon Valley platform that hates you and would happily deplatform you and they think they've done a good thing, right? And there have been lots of people, we've got lots of examples of this. I mean, my, my original channel was, of course, demonetized. So it was like, but I mean, that was fine. I could still, you know, use subscribe star and things like that. So, you know, so I wasn't, I didn't have a problem with money, uh, but it was more like, I don't like living with this profound threat of insecurity, like this sort of Damocles hanging over my head. Uh, but also, I was thinking, the I because this was two years ago now, and I was at the point where I was like, look, we've got a real problem with the way that we approach just the world. It's the, the it's the Western worldview has become entirely two dimensional, and we need a space where it can operate as kind of a bit of a think tank to start really analyzing what it is about conservative values and liberal values and progressivism that are in conflict and why the why Cthulhu only ever swims left, right? And how we can start actually building a new conservatism that can actually push rightwards for once and things like this. Uh, so it was it was a combination of things. And also I wanted to give an opportunity to m many more people than myself to be able to do things, you know, because like the more voices we have, the better. And so creating institutions, I think, is actually a really useful thing for the right to do because Again, it's like conquest, second law. Anything that's not explicitly founded as a right-wing institution inevitably becomes left-wing over time. Uh, so, okay, well, let's it's in deliberately found a right-wing institution that will not become left-wing over time. So we can actually use this as a kind of a, a platform to start doing things with. And actually, I think it's it's played out really well in that regard. Like, oh, absolutely, yeah. It, it's allowed us to, A, develop you know quite sophisticated understanding of conservative philosophy uh, and left-wing philosophy. And we've been able to get really, uh, you know, really some really big names in the office and uh, have them on the podcast. Like, mm. right said Fred. Is that, you, know, <laughs> like, like, you know, right said Fred, Lawrence Fox, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Martin Daubney, like Calvin Robinson, like just allows us to start becoming a bit of a network, a, a nexus on, on network for people who are like, okay, there is a real problem with what's going on in society and we need to start coordinating. Uh, and so this, it, it's these multiple factors that this has mm. been born out of. But I, th I think he's doing it right. Yeah, so do I. I think that, since I started, I'd, I'd spent about four years knowing the ins and outs of psychology and reading research papers. And I'd followed politics in a sort of cursory sort of way. I knew roughly what was going on, mm. but I've learned a lot since starting here just mm. because I've been in that ecosystem where there are so many people that know so many things and have spent so much time that the the collective experience not to make it sound like we're some sort of collectivist organization no but no but you are right like the, the, that's the point isn't it being in a place where you've got lots of people who are incredibly well versed in their subjects and it's mm. all sort of you know converging on the same sort of point that's great you know that's incredibly useful for everyone in the office i find actually i know this is a bit of a weird thing to say that i've learned more here in my two years here mm. and i probably ha have in my say first two years of university well, that's good to know so i, I think <laughs> that we must be doing something yeah. right if just by doing our job mm. i've i've gained more knowledge from this than i i would have deliberately studying no yeah, well that, that's how i feel about it like because mm. you know there's always something interesting that someone has discovered that they're sharing with the office it's, oh it's interesting you know and it's the, the One of the problems I find that I was having just researching on my own at home, reading books and stuff, mm. is you end up kind of flat, you know? It's like, okay, well, I've read that, I've read that. I don't really know what I'm, you know, that you you need the stimulus of someone's, like, just saying something random that connects a bunch of dots for you and things mm -hmm. like that, that you don't really, you, you can't you can't buy that kind of inspiration, you know? You can't plan it. It just happens. And luckily, we've created the sort of space where it can happen. And mm. it, it tends to, so it's, it's just really good. 
I know that when you're in isolation and you're thinking about um, lots of um, high ideals and things like that, quite often you run into pitfalls and the same ones over and over again because you're approaching the problem yeah. in the same way. I yeah, think yeah. that having lots of people... Fresh perspective. Exactly, yes. So moving on to the actual name, the Lotus Eaters, because there are still many people asking questions about this oh, when, uh, okay. when I asked. And yeah. um, I think... Um, yeah, so I don't know why. It was just something that I thought was uh, different and memorable, really. Mm -hmm. that, um, it, it meant that people would recognize it in the space, right? Because like having an unusual brand is important, but also it's kind of non-threatening, uh, which I think was <laughs> like something I wanted um, because you see a lot of American media and American media generally, like Steve Bannon, The War Room. I had that in mind yeah, as you were exactly. saying it, yeah. It's like, look, I, I actually want to think of these things in a different way. And I think the initial framing is important. And if we frame it like we're not actually about to raise a regiment, that might be useful, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that he's doing anything wrong or anything like that. I can see why, from his perspective, that's what he's doing because that's what he's. I think it's in. more culturally appropriate in America as well because sure. they're they're used to more hyperbolic language, whereas yes. over here, if you call something yeah. the war room, you expect them to have maps of Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. On the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, and I, I guess I just always like the term the Lotus Caesars just sounds mm -hmm. fun to me uh, and it allows us to have a really nice sort of aesthetic to the site mm. uh, and the office and it allows us to to have a reason to do that and a lot of people are like well aren't the Lotus Caesars like drug addicts it's like no they're actually not like if you actually go and read the Odyssey can we scroll down on this a bit John just so I can see the full clip uh, no no up a bit just that quote right that that there is everything that Homer tells us about the Lotus Caesars mm -hmm. and basically all it is is <clears throat> It's the I think it's the first island uh, that they come to, um, or one of one of the earliest I islands. And in the Odyssey, on every island they go to, other than the Lotus Eaters, someone's got really negative designs on them, as in they're either trying to eat them or kill them or you know seduce them or turn them into pigs or whatever it is. But it's only on the island of the Lotus Eaters where they're just like nice and they're just kind, and they give them the lotus fruit, right? And so this is like. It, it's portrayed as some sort of, I don't know, magical fruit, but, um, but they say here, and whoever of them ate of the honey sweet fruit of the Lotus no longer had any wish to bring back word or return, but there they were fain to abide among the Lotus eaters, feeding on the Lotus and forgetful of their homeward way. And so Odysseus forcibly drags them back to the ships <laughs> and then carries on the way. Now, the problem with that is that it would have been better for those men to just stay on the island of the Lotus eaters because everyone dies apart from Odysseus on his journey home literally everyone so thanks odysseus uh but there's there's no there's no mention of you know uh intoxication or anything like I that. i think it's just that it's a sweet fruit they've probably been at sea for a long time sure and i imagine it's probably quite nice but so. the, it's it's the there is a kind of magical effect that it's mm. having like forgetful of the homeward way and just happy to stay with the lotus eaters like the it, it to me it seems more like a metaphor to a return to a different kind of life yeah, right? as in the uh, uh, was it in Dialectic of Enlightenment? I think it's Horkheimer and uh, I can't remember which other Frankfurt School author it was. Uh, but they they see this as being a return to a more sort of um, primitive uh, form of life, and maybe it is. But the point is, it's interpreted as a paradigm shift into something else. Do we want progress, continual progress, until we're living in brave new world? No, I think I'd rather go. You know, eat of the lotus, which is a, a metaphor for just a paradigm shift back to something more natural, you know, something mm -hmm. more normal, something that actually is clearly more desirable. You know, it's honey sweet. Uh, and I thought that was just cute, to be honest. I thought it was just a cute thing. And, uh, you know, it seems that it would have been better for people to stay on the island of the low seas, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Continue on with Odysseus, progressing onwards into progress where everyone dies. Uh, and so, yeah, but I mean, naming anything is difficult. So Of course. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard from many people who've owned businesses before that trying to come up with a name that isn't yeah. taken is impossible. Yeah, that was another thing as well. I, the website was free. So <laughs> I, could, I could get lutzies.com and, uh, you know, it was actually available. If you enjoyed this freemium preview, you can watch the full video at lotuseaters.com or click the link in the description.